Hey guys, what's going on? It's Ash here coming at you today in Clash Royale. And as promised, I'm here to share Johnny's tied for second place deck. And check this out, guys. He hit me up yesterday and he said, hey, I just won another 1K tournament using this minor control deck. It's an updated variation and I had him do a whole write-up on the deck that I'm going to share with you guys today. And hopefully, as always, it's going to be my job to deconstruct the deck, break it down for you guys. That way, when you use it, you're set up for success. So let's hop into the replays here. What I'm going to do is just highlight some of the notable replays from the second place finish where he coincidentally won $100 from me for using the Dark Goblin in the deck. I asked him more about the Dark Goblin, by the way, Johnny on the top using this Control Miner deck. So the Dark Goblin has been added, and you know what, let's start by talking about the Rocket, because the Rocket is probably going to be the most important card in this deck, specifically on ways that you might misuse the card, meaning that when you have Rocket in the deck, oftentimes you're just sitting on the rocket you're not using it too much other than maybe trading it for an elixir pump or just chipping away at the final hp off a tower towards the end of a match but in this deck johnny says he uses the rocket a lot and you're gonna see that in some of these replays here but using the rocket defensively is a key part to this deck and if you don't use it defensively you're gonna run into a lot of problems playing this deck i can already anticipate some people saying you know i just don't have an answer for x y or z and the answer is Rocket. Don't use it just for chip damage, or it's actually more than chip, but don't use it just for direct crown damage. Use it for defense as well. So the type of defense that Johnny's going to use with the Rocket is in a pinch, you, you saw on the screen, even in a pinch, he'll use it against a minion horde, take the negative elixir trade rather than lose his tower. But more importantly, even against an Ice Golem Hog Rider push, if he doesn't have his Bowler or his Inferno Tower in rotation, he's not afraid to use the rocket if he has to. Same thing goes with elite barbarians and basically any really strong push, especially a lava loon push or a strong balloon push. I mean, your only real answer in this deck besides the inferno tower, of course, is the dark goblin and he's going to do a decent amount of chip damage, but you're going to need to rely on that rocket to take down the balloon. At tournament level standards, the balloon will be sitting on like a few HP left. You just have to hit it once with the dark goblin. It will be dead after the rocket. So those are the situations that you're going to be using your defensive rocket again you'll be seeing that throughout these replays today all right so we talked about the rocket defensively but you know i don't want to get too far ahead of myself so let me take a step back here with you guys and just talk about the overall deck play philosophy so johnny said he likes to start out super conservatively so you need to figure out what your opponent's win condition is maybe it's graveyard maybe it's elite barbarians hog whatever it is maybe it's a big beat down tank deck with golem and uh, or a lava loon deck I mean there's a lot of decks right now in the meta and this deck can certainly crush them all if it's played correctly so once you identify what your opponent's win condition is you can find the perfect counter within your own deck now this deck does have counters for every single different type of win condition in the meta so there's no zap though you have the log if you don't have the log or, or whatever reason you want to try it on on ladder and your log isn't leveled up you you can, of course, use the common card, the Zap spell. That actually does have benefits as opposed to the Log. It has that instant direct damage, and it can generally be a good combo with the Miner, but the Log is actually preferred, again, by Johnny. The reason being, it has that pushback effect, obviously, that buys you more time on defense, just has a more controlly aspect to it as a defensive card, and that's mainly how you're going to be using it. Your Log is going to be your main weapon against these bait-type players. Now, you can see Johnny over here just picked up a 1-0 victory against Hazard. And the thing about Johnny is, is that he said in, in these tournaments, he never got more than one crown, okay? So that's saying a lot. That, you know, it's kind of harkened back to our minor control days. Again, it's been a while, right? But these are a 1-0 victory deck. If you have to win 2-1, it's way more difficult than your average, you know, powerful archetype deck with a minor control. The idea here, the whole idea behind the name control deck is that you're going to control the tempo of the game, the pace of the game, and more importantly, you're going to control every offensive push that comes your way from your opponent, and you're going to shut it down, and then you're going to translate that into a little bit of chip damage. Again, on this replay, Johnny at the top here going against a graveyard deck. 
deck. So speaking of graveyard decks, the way that Johnny handles that is precision placement and timing with his ice golem. Now you have the dark goblin. Dark goblin is like a machine gun, so if you play him correctly in combination with the ice golem, you should be able to shut down, and of course minions being your number one counter to a graveyard, but you do have the secondary counter in the ice golem and the dark goblin. Think of that as your soft defense option as your secondary option if you're caught out of cycle. So that pretty much covers defense. Obviously, you guys know Ice Golem, the most important card in the game, really in tandem both offensively and defensively, but you're going to be leaning on the Ice Golem very heavily, especially for swarm units. You have the log to take out a skeleton army, but against like a minion horde, you're going to be in trouble if you don't save your Ice Golem and then use your Dark Goblin as backup. You actually saw on the previous replay, Johnny was caught out of rotation with all of those cards, and he had to use a rocket defensively against a minion horde. Again, not the ideal situation, but in a pinch, you gotta do what you gotta do. It's a control deck. You gotta play defense first, offense second. So let's talk about offense here. Uh, by the way, gonna be a little bit of a shorter video today because yesterday I kept you guys for almost an hour recapping actually this tournament that I'm showing you the replays from, although all these replays are unique to this video. So what I wanna do is kind of end things off here talking about the offensive philosophy of a control deck, specifically this control deck, and I also want to touch a little bit on the Dark Goblin because I specifically asked Johnny for all his advice so far on the Dark Goblin and how to play it in a control deck correctly. So let's start off with just the offensive philosophy. So your job is going to be to place the Ice Golem or the Bowler defensively either as a distraction or to, to stop a big push, and then once that turns into a counter push, you're going to wait till the tower locks on to either the Ice Golem or the Bowler, then you're going to send in your Miner. So it might seem a little bit unorthodox, but think of it as kind of a three-phase offensive combination. Phase one, send in the Bowler or the Ice Golem across the bridge and let it aggro the crown tower of your opponent. Phase two, send in the Miner. He's going to do extra chip damage because he's going to have temporary immunity because the crown tower is going to be distracted. In phase three, if applicable, if you have the Elixir to do so without stretching yourself too thin, especially in double elixir time, then you want to drop your minions behind the bowler or the ice golem. So what you're doing here is really setting the table for a really, really tough to defend offensive push. You have your bowler or your ice golem distracting the tower. You have the miner who's going to do four to 500 damage worth of chip damage essentially because that bowler or the ice golem is tanking for him, of course, if, if it goes uncountered. And then thirdly, you're going to have the minions coming in safe behind the newly distracted crown tower by either the miner or the bowler if the bowler's not dead yet. And then the minions are going to have to be defended as well. Now Johnny does use the Dark Goblin as well offensively, and the Dark Goblin is awesome because he uses him mainly in three ways. The first, and you probably saw on your screen earlier in the previous replay, is as kind of a sniper from the other, other side of the arena, from your side of the arena, to take down a furnace and a barbarian hut. Now, even against really elite players, Johnny can often catch them snoozing using the Dark Goblin in such a fashion. So he's a great sniper because of his range. Now, if you're playing against a really good player, they're going to know what you're going to do with the Dark Goblin the second time they drop their furnace or their barbarian hut or whatever they're dropping, uh, even a goblin hut, and they're going to pre-place an ice golem to distract your Dark Goblin. But that's actually not a bad thing as well because ice golem is so important, both off offensively and defensively in so many decks, if you can get their Ice Golem out of rotation, out of cycle like that, or you can disturb their cycle, Johnny will look at that as a win as well. Now, the second way is just defensively, and Johnny loves the Dark Goblin because of his range. You can keep him very, very safe outside of harm uh, in the Fireball Zone, where you'd be susceptible if you were playing, say, a Musketeer, unless you were really careful. So the Dark Goblin, just what much more air room for error in terms of placement, and you can keep keep him really nice and safe from a safe distance. Similar to a princess, obviously different utility, uh, but the similar idea, because of the range, you get that definite benefit defensively. And the third way is offensively. It's pretty simple, it's pretty straightforward, but 
Johnny likes to be sneaky with it, and he stressed this with me. He said he tries to be sneaky as much as he can. So he will send in a lone miner, he'll wait a second or so, and then he'll send in the Dark Goblin. But basically what he's trying to do there is send in the Dark Goblin while they're dropping a troop to defend the miner. And it doesn't work every single time, but oftentimes this creates a real annoyance in your opponent, and that's really what you're trying to do, right? You're trying to annoy your opponent here. So, especially with a control deck, you can frustrate opponents really easily with this deck. So, even if you can't connect to that tower with the Dark Goblin every single time, and look at this snipe job here by the Dark Goblin for Johnny. Took down that Expo, and then he's going to go ahead and lock onto the opposite tower, too. You can just see how effective he can be. So, when he does lock on, you're going to take down easily 300 HP off that tower. He shoots so quickly, and even when he doesn't lock on, you're still going to make your opponent use more Elixir Defending than they initially wanted to against both the Miner and the Dark Goblin. So lastly, let's just mention again the Rocket. We start with the Rocket, we're going to end with the Rocket. So the whole idea behind this chip deck is to understand your magic number. Now this is important really in any deck. If you guys want to take your game to the next level, one of the most basic but important things you should understand is how much direct damage you can inflict upon one tower in one cycle. So in this deck, it would be the tournament level standards for the Log, which is 104 HP onto a Crown Tower, and the Rocket, which is 493. So when you add the two together, it's 597. So you have to get your opponent's tower down to 597 HP, and then you'll be able to take it down in one cycle. So that is your job throughout the first part of the match. The first 90% of the match is get that tower down to 597, and then you'll know you'll be able to take it out with one rocket and one log. So guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. It was a pleasure sharing it. Special thanks and congratulations to Johnny. And guys, thanks to all of you for watching. As always, take care, guys.